So good morning to you all. Thank you, boys, for coming in. Alfie, how is your hay fever at the moment and how bad does it get sometimes? Um, sometimes when I'm on the field, it gets bad because there's lots and lots of grass. Lots of grass is not good for you, is it? Yeah. Um, and how does that affect him, Vicky? How bad does it get for um, Alfie? It tends to be mainly his eyes. He does sneeze a lot but like we can deal with that with tissues and things. Yeah. But his eyes swell up a lot, they get very red and runny. And he gets very worried about it. Yeah. Um, like we have a spray and a mask and things to help, but he still... What, what age was he when he started? Because I have to say, I don't know why I haven't thought about young, affecting young children yeah. so much. What age was mm. he when, when you noticed he was starting to get affected? I think it was when he was about three and a half, we noticed he was more sneezy and rubbed his eyes a lot in the summer. Yeah. But it was last year, mainly when we noticed just how serious it was, like how much it was affecting mm. him. And how bad does it get? Um, very bad, really. It's like rubbish. He struggles, it's, it's, yeah, it's, he struggles it's a terrible thing. Mums, uh, Vicky and Claire, do they have brothers or sisters? Alfie doesn't. Right. Yeah, so, I have two older kids. Right, you have yeah. two others? Yeah. Do they suffer from this? They do suffer they from this. They do it, suffer yeah. from this, which yeah. brings me to the good doctor, Dr. Glennis here. Uh, I, have, I have four other brothers, mm -hmm. right? My mum and dad, I wasn't aware at all of them suffering from this. Uh, I am the second eldest, and I have, as I say, four other brothers, all flattened, debilitated by this, mm. to the point that I feel, and I've got children who suffer from it as well, um, and I feel really blessed, lucky. Why has it passed me? I really do not know. There's a genetic influence and an environmental one. Presumably, you grew up in the same family yeah. as your brothers, so your yeah. environment will have been the same. You're yeah. Anyone delivered by caesarean section in the family? Uh, yes, I think there was, yes. Not you? Not me. Because caesarean section makes it more likely that you get uh -huh. allergies. Does it? Yep. Well, I've never yep. heard that before, Glenn. 21% increase in food allergies and an increase Why do you think that is, then? Probably because when you come out naturally, you pick up the bacteria and viruses from your mother's vagina yeah. and they colonise you and they're what you need. Gosh. If you come out in the operating theatre, you pick up what's mm. in the operating theatre. Um, that's so good. That's very interesting. I hadn't heard that before. Um, Claire, we've heard about Alfie's symptoms. Mm -hmm. What about Carl? He's six years old. Yeah. Uh, when did you first notice it and how bad do his symptoms get? Yeah, so really very early on um, from a young child, um, he's had some form of, you know, sneezing is, is a big thing for him and the itchy eyes. But really the last three years, I would say, um, you know, any time we kind of go to the park, you know, in, in very quickly, his eyes will start to swell up. Um, what can you suggest uh, that actually works? Particularly for children. Right. Simple things, first of all, like avoiding grass pollen, not going out when it's at high levels. Mm -hmm. Washing your eyes and nose out with salty water helps, and some non-specific eye drops that you've got are also helpful. Many people use antihistamines, but they only take symptoms down by 10% and you must never use an old-fashioned sedating one because that really knocks kids out and they do badly in exams. What's better than an, an antihistamine is either a nasal spray mm -hmm. and can I teach you how to use yeah, a nasal please, spray? Please. It really, really matters that you use it right. Mm -hmm. okay. First of all, you put it next to your toothbrush in the bathroom so you don't forget it. Just before cleaning your teeth, pick it up, give it a shake, take the top off, look down as though you're reading a book and pretend you're a pharaoh. So you use this hand for the other side of the nose. Yeah. And for a child, it'll be one puff aimed at the ear, but inside the nose. Swap hands, same the other side, one puff. Don't sniff. Put it down, clean your teeth. Leave the fluid inside your nose. The tiny hairs will beat it backwards right to the back of your throat. That'll take 20 minutes. That's when it works. And do you, should you be doing that, Glynis, every day, whether you're every suffering day. symptoms or not? Every day, starting about two weeks before you normally get symptoms. And that really takes the symptoms down by about 20%, about twice as effective as antihistamine. But what I suspect these two lads would benefit from is what's called immunotherapy. Which is? It's when you give them the allergen, so we give them grass pollen. Like a vaccination. In the form of like a va well, it can be done <coughs> by injection, but now it can also be done by tablets or drops under the tongue. 
Never heard of that. That's ah, a good idea. These work really well. They take the symptoms down much more. You need to do it from about January to the end of July, each year for three years running. And they take the symptoms down more than the steroids do, about 30 to 40 per cent, but they also alter the course of disease. Now, as I understand it, you can pick it up at any stage in life. I mean, we're talking yes. about the children here, but you as parents could, yep. could end up with it. Where do you stand? People talk about petroleum jelly, putting some petroleum that, jelly up that, your nose. That reduces the contact with pollen by about a third. Yeah, and washing your washing clothes, your... washing your hair, Absolutely. having a shower. Yep, when you've been out, you've got grass pollen in your hair, come in, wash your hair, have a shower, wash your clothes, bring the washing in before evening because the pollen grains come down as the air cools. So only hang it out when the sun is really hot. Mums, is there anything in your life, your experience, I mean, the doctor's talking about, you know, all these practical ways, anything that you have discovered or you've seen that you, you find helps your boys? Um, for us, um, it's purely antihistamines, mm. but it's really not exposing them too much to playing outside, which is difficult. Which for is very hard for Vicky, them. Vicky, what it's about you? Um, I think that's what it's really well is um, the eye spray that we've got, it goes over on his eyelids rather than in the eyes. And I find, like, Alfie tells me that really relieves his symptoms. Um, his school actually told us about that, so... The one that you spray really well. on the lid? Yeah. Yes, yeah. on the eyelid. And also, we've recently found out about these masks. Um, we've purchased that for this year, trying to be prepared, and that goes on his eyes. It stays in the fridge when he's not using it, so it's nice and cool, ready for and when his and eyes it's kind of flare heavier, up. Isn't yes, it? yeah. It's like a gel inside, yeah. so it's very cold when it goes onto his eyes, and he actually goes to sleep wearing that sometimes. And, Doc, this season's going to last how long? Probably till the end of July. Yeah. And then there are weed pollens. And then in the winter, there are things like house dust mites, cat and dog something. allergens. Yeah. And yeah. many people who are allergic to grass pollen go on to get allergic to other things. Do you know, we could devote a whole program could, to we it. Absolutely um, could. But, but thank you very much, you for everybody, for telling us your story and, Doctor, for giving us your advice as well.